women play different roles in different seasons of their lives. We lead, we serve, we love. In the midst of all of these, we oftentimes forget to take care of the most important relationships that we have. Our relationships with God and with ourselves. When the Jewels Conference was conceived, the heart of a woman was put in its core. The Jewels Conference is a one-day event that seeks to empower women in their personal journey of balancing their roles, careers, relationships, and dreams. While it may be different from how we used to do it, we were more connected than ever with our sisters, not just from the Philippines. Let's fill our hearts with this promise so that we can be more and serve more the people around us. Join us at Jewels Conference 2021 Common Ground. Praise the name 
of the Lord. God has blessed us and brought us to this time. God, God has blessed, blessed us, us and brought, brought us, us to this, this place. place. God has caused His name to dwell in our midst. God, God has started our hearts and made us glad. God has shown us His glory in His mighty word. God has shown us the way of truth and life. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to Him. For 12 years, God has nurtured and fed us. For 12 years, God has shown us His grace. For 12 years, God has given Himself in word and sacrament. For 12 years, God has empowered us with His Holy Spirit. For 12 years, God has made us His witnesses in the world. For 12 years, God has placed us in loving fellowship with one another. Amen. Praise the Lord for 12 years. Praise Him for many more. Praise the Lord forevermore. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Let us worship the Lord. Can you can invite you to stand with me? Welcome to the feast. And if you're happy that you are here and you know it, come on, clap your hands. <laughs> Clap your hands, no, because we're safe at <laughs> And of course, happy 12th anniversary feast, Alabang. Pakibati ka yung katabi mo, hindi mo siya hawakan, pakisigaw na lang, happy anniversary! It's so good to be together. And speaking of 12, alam nyo ba na maraming bagay sa buhay natin? Not 12. There are a lot of things in life that are 12. Right? In music, there are 12 notes. 12 notes. And in those 12 notes, infinite combinations of melody can be made. Right? Within those 12 notes. Ano pa bang mga 12 sa buhay natin? There are 12 hours in the morning and 12 hours in the evening. There are 12 months in a year. And within that limited time, infinite things can happen. Yes? Sa Bible, ano ba yung mga 12? Did you have the 12 tribes of Israel or the 12 apostles. And through those limited people, God did infinite things. So 12 is like a number that reminds us that within limited notes, within limited people like us, that within limited time, God can do infinite things. Parang tayo ngayon, tingnan nyo, limited venue capacity, limited people, but God can still do infinite things. Paul says it, Paul says it in, in Scripture that God can do immeasurably more than whatever we can ask, think, or imagine. And it's amazing how in the last 12 years, definitely God, you can say this with me, that God did infinitely amazing things through our feast. Amen? In fact, in the last 12 years, we have been in so many battles, but thankfully God fought on our side and He won the victory for us. So tonight, my friends, let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us rejoice for the victories that God has won then, for the victories God continues to win right now in the midst of this pandemic, and the victories that God will continue to win for us in the future, for us and His glory. Amen. If you believe that, let's come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on. We fight a battle that cannot be seen We're in the place we where we've never been 
We've seen the strongest warriors flee in fear. We take possession for our God is He. Sing. Give up our armors and lay down our shields. For in our weakness He will be revealed. We drop all weapons and then we take aim. We press on forward in His mighty name. So we sing hallelujah. Our victory has come. Sing out. We sing hallelujah. For the one who's overcome. We sing. Hallelujah. Every voice. They bear their swords, we fight with slings and stones. They gather against us, but what they don't know. We wrestle lions, we will rescue them. Come on. He made it happen, he will do it again. So we sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah for the one who's overcome. We sing hallelujah. I'm praising surrender, not for defeat, but victory. For this battle has been won now We leave no room for the enemy oh, Everybody sing Arms raised in surrender Not for defeat but victory My victory For this battle has been won now We leave no room for the enemy they bear their swords with fight with slings and stones Odds are against us, but what they don't know We wrestle lions, we will rescue them He made it happen, he will do it again So we sing hallelujah specific things. We pray for our relationships and we pray for our community. Lord, we lift up to you our relationships, specifically our broken 
and strained relationships. We entrust them to you, God. And we ask you that you would pour upon it the grace of forgiveness, the grace of reconciliation, the grace of unity, of understanding and healing. We pray tonight, God, whether it be in our own personal lives or in the lives of the other people that we know in the feast, that we claim and pray for restoration of marriages. We claim and pray for the restoration of families. We claim and pray for the restoration of all our relationships. In a special way, God, we also pray and lift up to you our community, the Feast Alabang District, and the greater community, the Light of Jesus family. God, we entrust to you the future of our community beyond this pandemic. Because we want to be stronger. We want to come out of this pandemic stronger than when we first came in. Stronger in our love to serve you. Stronger in our love for one another. And stronger in our mission of love to make disciples. We entrust you, God, our community. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. in the wind God you hold my days together and your time is never late I will trust you in the mountains in the valleys in between where you lead me in this journey that is where I'm meant to be you are good sovereign loving and true There's nothing you can do. I will rest in the promise that I have in you. You are good. I will trust in you. Let's sing. Lift your hands. Lift your voice. Trust you through the questions when my future is unsure. I may face the charted waters, but with you I stand secure. I will trust you in the breaking when my prayers are unfulfilled. God, I know you're orchestrated, for you work all things for good. You are good. Sovereign, loving and true, you are kind, faithful, there's nothing you can do, I will rest in the promise that I have in you, you are good, I will trust in Lift my hands and 
been Lord of all, of all of us and all the feast. And so we have been praying this prayer, declaring this with faith. Let us do it once again in our 12th year. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Together, today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand and bless His name. Thank you, Jesus. Sit down, brothers and sisters. Do you know what the shortest verse in the New Testament is? The shortest verse. Pinakamaikli. Alam ko, alam nyo na. It is found in John chapter 11, verse 35. And it says there that Jesus wept. Nung namatay si Lazarus, pinuntahan ni Jesus, and Jesus wept. That was the shortest verse in our English translation of the Bible. But the shortest verse in the Greek New Testament, kasi ang New Testament po ay sinulat sa Greek, the shortest verse is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. And it says there, Rejoice! Always. Can you read that? Rejoice always. It is a little verse with big implications. The word rejoice is a call to joy. Ito yung watchword ng mga early Christians, no? It is more than a term of worship. It was a word of acknowledgement. It's a salutation. See, Jesus used that word when He greets people. Paul, St. Paul, uses that word when he says goodbye to others. In this passage, Rejoice Always, Paul exhorts the saints to rejoice. Patingin nga ng mga kamay ng mga santo dito. Pataas nga ng kamay, mga santo. Ako lang, Lord, ako lang. Wala akong iba dito, ako lang talaga. If you join us in Quarry Start, yung paring na guest natin, si Father Mulavi, nang sabi niya, we have to be saints, all of us. Why? Because if we are not saints, we will not go to heaven. So sino mga saints dito? Pataas ang kamay. Ayan, dumami na. No? Very good. No? Paul exhorts all of us, saints, 
to rejoice. Actually, it is a command. We Christians are commanded by God to rejoice. And this command, listen, this command, rejoice, is in the present tense. Yung Greek na ginamit ay present tense. Anong ibig sabihin? It means keep rejoicing. Keep rejoicing. Kaya napakahirap nitong command na to. Why? Because we are to rejoice regardless of circumstance, of situation, or emotions. Alam nyo to eh. Dagdagan nyo na lang yung gagawin ko ha. Alam nyo yun eh. In good times and bad times, I'll be on your side forevermore. Ang gagaling, di ba? In good times, in bad times, we need to rejoice. We rejoice regardless. We rejoice always. Alam nyo, mas madali lununin to eh kung sinabi ni Lord ng rejoice period. Pero ang sinabi niya, rejoice always. But there are many times in our lives, ang daming dahilan, ang daming occasion na ano, na hindi naman ka-rejoice-rejoice. Taas lang ang kamay. Sino sa inyo rito itong pandemic na ito? Dumaan sa malaking problema. Taas ang kamay. Ayan, tingnan nyo. Ayan. Sino rito katabi niya ang problema niya ngayon? Ayan, o, tinan mo, nagtaas ang kamay. <laughs> diba? Dumaan tayo sa problema. Kaya, the command is to rejoice always, not only Sometimes. Let me share something to you, huh? Um, few weeks ago, nung pinalaya na tayong mga taga Maynila, no? at pwede nang lumabas-labas, na plano na namin yan with our friends na mag-three days vacation kami. Ganda na, plano na eh. Monday yung alis namin. Monday morning, ginising kami ng kasama sa bahay. At alam nyo sabi, yung nanay ko, 84 years old si mama, hindi makabangon sa kama. So punta kami, tinignan namin, ako, di namin, ano nangyayari dito? So pinakuhaan namin ng dugo. Tapos we found out, ang taas ng sugar. Tingnan nyo yung katabi nyo kung mukhang... Masarap kumain yan ng sugar, no? Kita mo yan. <laughs> Ang taas ho ng sugar. Gusto niyong hulaan kung gaano kataas? Subukan niyo hulaan. Magbigay lang kayo ng number. Ilan? 350? Higher. Grabe, no? Higher than 350. 400? Higher than 400. 450, higher than 450. 550, lower than 550. 495, ibaba mo pa ng siyam. 486, ang sugar ni mama, 84 years old. Tapos dapat nasa beach kami, pero nandito kami may sakit ang nanay. Di ba para? Yung mga bata para... Ano nangyari na naman? Dinala namin sa ospital. Alam nyo, blessing. Kasi walang tao sa ER. Nanay ko lang. Tapos sabi nung mga security guard, sir, wala hong COVID sa ospital na to ngayon. Nakaalis na nung isang araw pa, gumaling na. So kami talaga, hi. Pero, nasa ospital lang nanay mo. Ang taas ng sugar. Tapos kami, na pending ang outing, na pinaghihintay-hintay, naintindihan nyo yun, yung parang everything is... And then, ah, how can you rejoice? How can you rejoice? It says there, you can rejoice if you know the will of the Father, if you know the will of God. Yun ang hahanapin natin. Pag merong problema, ano kayang will ni Lord dito? Pag nakita mo yon, you will rejoice. It is difficult at that situation. But 
That is a command to all of us saints. Not easy. So we found out na talagang nanghina lang ang nanay namin, pinasitiskan, okay naman, everything, kinonfine. At pagconfine, hindi pwedeng pumunta kahit sino, kundi yung bantay, hindi naman kami ang bantay. So what do we do? We just wait. And I decided, sabi ko sa mga anak ko at asawa ko, pumunta pa rin tayo. Sayang ang bayad. Nabayaran mo na. Iwan natin si mama sa mga doktor. Kaya nila yan. Wala rin tayo magagawa. And we can go back anytime. So we went to the beach. And we were there. We enjoyed. Kasi we know already what's wrong with mama. Okay na. Yun lang yun. Pababain ng sugar. Uuwi rin yan. Okay. Nakarelax kami. You know, when we were going home the next day, si Helene said something very, very important. Pakinggan nyo sabi ni Helene. Nung nagpipray na kami, sabi niya ganyan. Uh, actually, sabi niya, that one day of not going is fine for us. Okay lang daw na hindi kami nakapunta doon. Bakit? So that we will know that nanay, nanay ang tawag niya, nanay will be much better from now on. Mas mabuti siya sa ngayon. And also, sabi niya, I cannot take one more day in that bathroom anymore. Hindi niya talaga type yung CR ng lugar. Hindi na raw niya kaya. At alam mo, sabi ni Heli, but I think that is the will of God for us. Grabe, no? 13 years old, got it all correct. Tapos ako, I was still wondering, Lord, what is your will there? Bakit di mo kami pinapunta ng day one? Bakit nagkasakit ang nan... Grabe, y y yung hanapin mo yun. Trusting the will of God is the key to rejoicing always. Or look at the people around you. Sabi mo sa kanya, trust the Lord. Go, trust the Lord. Trust the will of God, not the goodness of our situation. No. Because we will all experience sickness, loss, death, tribulations, and dami niyan. But how we respond in faith to these situations will make us rejoice always. When we rejoice, brothers and sisters, it is our present declaration of our future hope. If we know the end of the story, nako, we will all rejoice regardless of what happens around us. When we know where we are going, we will all rejoice. Let's all stand again, brothers and sisters. Ang daming tao ngayon lutang sa buhay. And we here at the feast, we would really like the people to see us. Not walking in fear, not anymore. But the people will see us rejoicing. Yung pag nakita ka ng mga kaibigan mo, online or personal, nakikita ba nila na takot ka? O nakikita ka nila that you are rejoicing? In the midst of everything happening in this world, anong nakikita sa iyo? The command to rejoice says, keep rejoicing kahit mahirap. This is my prayer for each and every one of us that in the time of problems, trials, we will still find the will of God there and continue to rejoice. Twelve years of the feast, and we are still here. No pandemic can stop us. Tuloy-tuloy ang online natin, di ba? We continue to minister to people. We continue to help others. 
we miss this face to face but now while we are like this let us continue to rejoice thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We will rejoice always. Tell people around you, rejoice always. Be seated. Let me call my fellow builders to preach the word of God to us. We continue. Matthew. Okay, ito yung series natin, ha? Huh? So, let me call the first preacher to bless us today, Brother James Nicholas. Good evening, everyone. And to those who are watching right now sa ating online Hello everybody. Happy anniversary. Alam nyo, nakakamiss tong ganitong gathering. Nakakamiss pala yung... Kasi pag online, sanay tayo sa online, pag online, hindi mo alam kung yung mga nakikinig sa'yo or naiintindihan ng audience yung sinasabi mo. Kasi walang reaction eh, di ba? Hindi mo nakikita, hindi mo alam kung natatawa sila pag nag-jojo ka. <laughs> Hindi mo alam eh. Kaya hindi ka tulad pag live, tama ba? Pag live gathering, nakakayang hindi ka tumawa. Tama? Bakit kasi, baka isipin ng katabi mo, hindi mo lang nag-gets. <laughs> diba? Sige nga, pakibati mo ngayon katabi mo, pakitapik mo ngayon katabi mo ng iyong kilay. Bawal pa kasi yung kamay, ano? Yung kilay lang at sabihin mo sa kanya, kindatan mo siya, sabihin mo, mag-react ka. Sige, gawin mo, sabihin mo, mag-react ka para alam kong gets mo. But, but really, this is what I want you to tell the person beside you, or the person on your right and on your left. On your left. Sabi mo nga sa kanya, I rejoice seeing you tonight. Yes? But you know, kidding aside, I miss seeing all of you. And my prayer is that God will allow us to meet once again in our respective feast by a live gathering. Tonight, we'll continue with our Matthew series. Side A and Side B. Sino sa inyo nakakasubaybay ng ating series? Sige, pakitaas nga yung mga kamay. Ayan. Minimum, minimum participation yung mga taas ng kamay na ganyan. Ha? Pakitaas nga yung kamay yung mga nakaka, nakakasubaybay ng Side A and Side B. Today, we're going to talk on this topic. Searching sheep and restored relationship. You know, this topic will teach us how to deal with our differences. Kasi lahat tayo magkakaiba. Tama ba? Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Mukha, magkamukha ba kayo niyan? Matakot ka pag magkamukha kayo niyan. Huh? So, magkaiba tayo. That's why we need to learn this topic for us to have more 12 years. Sino sa inyo gusto ng may 12 years pa ulit magkakasama tayo? Ayan. Or 120 years magkakasama pa. Sige nga, taas nyo kamay nyo. Ayan, ang problema lang dyan, pag 120 years, yung mga ushers natin, mas mabagal, mas, 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 mas mabilis ka pang maglakad. Kasi yung mga ushers natin, medyo uugod-ugod na. <laughs> That's why, today, we're going to talk on this topic. On how to deal with our differences. And the one big message today is this. Love is tough. Can you say that? Love is tough. Merong teacher, tinatinanong niya yung kanyang estudyante. Sabi niya, chinek niya kung gano'ng katalino. Sabi niya, uh, ikaw, ano mangyayari pag tinanggal natin yung kanang tenga mo? Sabi nung bata. Sabi niya, ma'am, hihina po yung pandinig ko. Ah, very good. Ano naman mangyayari pag tinanggal natin yung kaliwang tenga mo? Sabi nung bata. Sabi niya, ma'am, lalabo po ang mata ko. Sabi ni ma'am, mali, mali, hindi lalabo mata mo, hihina lalo tenga mo, or baka maging bingi ka pa. Sabi ng bata, ma'am, 
mali po kayo. Kasi pag tinanggal niyo yung kanang tenga ko, tinanggal mo yung kaliwang tenga ko, dalabo po mata ko kasi malalaglag yung salamin ko. At sino ba mga nakasalamin dito? Subukan niyo patanggal yung tenga ninyo. Malalaglag. Lalabo mata mo. Now, why the story? Friends, do you like correcting people? Meron pa sa inyo dito, gusto mong kinukorek yung mga tao sa paligid mo? You know, I believe that most people are allergic to confrontation. Kaya kahit hindi mo na gusto yung nangyayari, yung ginagawa sa you just allow it to happen. Tama ba? You do not confront, you do not correct. Bakit? Kasi ayaw natin ng confrontation. And this is when relationship starts to, to be strained. Naalala ko merong isang may bahay. Sabi nung, uh, nung husband niya, sabi niya, alam mo ha, natutuwa ako sa'yo kasi nagmature ka na. Kasi dati pag nag-aaway tayo, binubungangaan mo ko, pag pinapagalitan kita, sumasagot ka ngayon, pag inaaway kita, tahimik ka lang, magpunta ka ng banyo, naglilinis ka. I think nagmature ka na. Sabi niya, by the way, bakit ba ang tagal mo maglinis pag nagpupunta ka sa CR after natin mag-away? Sabi niya, kasi mali yung brush na ginagamit ko eh. Sabi niya, lalakihan natin, bibilang kita ng malaking brush yung meron pang handle na ganoon para mabilis yung trabaho mo. Sabi ng asawa, sabi niya, wag nahan, okay na ka dun sa brush na ginagamit ko. Sabi niya, ano ba ginagamit mo? Toothbrush mo. <laughs> Di ba? Minsan, because of not knowing how to deal with the disdifferences, nakaka-problema tayo. But you know, through the decades, I've realized the healthy relationship require a caring confrontation. And in today's key passage, Jesus teaches us how to correct people. But you know, this is a very controversial topic because of these two cultural pulls in our modern world. Sabi nyo nga, cultural pull. Ano yung cultural pull? This, are, this attitude of today's generation that made us pull back in giving correction. Ano yung, ano yung dalawa na yan? Number one is this. Ito yung mason attitude ng mga generation ngayon, lalo ng mga kabataan. Who are you to tell me what to do? Who you? Tama ba? Sino ka Now, eto pa, maranig mo sa mga tao ngayon, pinagsasab- pag pinagsabihin mo sila, your values are yours and my values are mine. Walang basagan ng trip. Narinig ba yan? Walang basagan ng trip. You do your thing and I do my thing. To each his own. Tama? To each his own. Now, sa mga tao ng ito, for these people, this Now, there's no absolute truth. Walang absolute truth because everything for them is just perspective. Yung, yung alam mo, hindi, hindi tama yan. It's just, it's just a perspective for, for you. Kaya ako, I will do my thing, you do your thing. At dahil walang absolute truth, tama lang yung tanong nila, who are you to tell me what to do? Nalala ko yung nagkikwentuhan yung Uh, yung lektor nilapitan nung uh, Eucharistic minister sabi niya uh, manang pwede ba pakiaral niyo naman yung pag nagbabasa ka ng salita ng Diyos every mass pakiaral mo naman before before going to the mass and and read it sabi ni manang sabi niya wala pa kay alaman hindi ko naman pinapakilaman yung pagsubo mo ng ostia wala pa kay alaman at maya maya itong Si Manang, nung nagbabasa na, sabi niya, a reading from the book of revolution. <laughs> oh my God. Revolution. Dapat revelation. Revolution. Tapos sa dulo niya, this is the end of the world. <laughs> Di ba? Pag, pag hindi mo pinakinggan yung iba, doon tayo nagkakaproblema. That's why correction is needed. Pero alam nyo, hindi lang yan because you will hear them also say this, as long as I do not harm anyone, I'm free to do what I want to do. Hanggat hindi, wala naman ako nasasaktan eh. So wala tayong pakialaman. 
But you know, every time I hear people say na wala man ako nasasaktan, ito lang ang tanong ko sa kanila, how sure are you that no one is being harmed? How sure are you? Because I believe our deeds done in privacy of our bedrooms, even our most hidden thoughts, it can impact other generation. Yes? But you know, the logic of this argument, you can tell me what you cannot tell me what to do because there are no absolute truth. Is dishonest. Hindi kumpleto. Or hindi tama. Why? Dahil kahit sabihin nila that there are no absolute truth, they still believe in some absolutes. Like limbawa, wag mo kung pakialaman. They believe in other truth. At ano yung truth na yun? That you should not harm anyone. Wag wala pakialaman. Wag ka mananakit ng iba. Wag mo kung pakialaman, you should tolerate everybody. Tama? Wag mo kung pakialaman because everyone is equal. Yes? And mind you, friends, this is okay because you need absolute truth if you want to live amicably with others. Kailangan mo ng absolute truth. Without absolute, will, will create hell on earth. Magkakaproblema tayo, magkakagulo. Alam mo yun, yung kunyari yung teacher nagtuturo ng centripugal force. Alam, alam niyo ba yung centripugal force? Ano yung centripugal force? <laughs> <laughs> Centrifugal force, yung parang sa merry-go-round, di ba? Pag umiikot na ganyan, it is the outward force on a mass that being rotated. Yun ang centrifugal force. Naalala niyo na yung math niyo? <laughs> yung science niyo? Y- yun yung centrifugal force. Alam mo kahit sabihin mo, hindi ako naniniwala dyan ma'am sa centrifugal force, centrifugal force na yan, or centrifugal force na yan, o ano pang force na yan, hindi ako naniniwala dyan. Even if you do not believe that, Mga drivers, tama ba? Kahit gaano ka ka-close kay Jesus, kahit gaano ka ka-close kay Lord, pag hindi ka nag-minor, habang ikaw ay umiikot sa isang rotonda, hahalik at hahalik ang mukha mo sa bintana. Tama? Kahit hindi ka maniwala. Why? Because these are some truth. So there's absolute truth in this world. And for us, Jesus followers, we have this, or we believe in this, truth that God sacrificed himself for us and he calls us to do the same for others. Yes? Ito yung palakpa naman natin ng Diyos. We believe that we should be selfless, that we should be generous, that we should be faithful, we should be humble and committed. By the way, have you ever wondered, bakit yung mga taong nagsasabing, you have no right to judge me, can be very judgmental to others? Naisip nyo ba yun? You know, I saw this in Pinterest. Ang sabi dito, pakipost mga, sabi dito, yung mga taong kung magsalita, akala mo kung sino, yung kung humusga sa kapwa nila, akala mo perfecto, malamang ito yung mga problemado. Ginagawa na lang libangan ang manlait ng tao. Yan. Nakita ko lang sa Pinterest yan. May mga ganyan tao, yung nagagalit sila pa when people judge them, but they are also judgmental. And you know why they are judgmental? Because of the second pull. And what's that second pull? I'm free to say anything I want. Di ba lalo na ngayon? Because of social media, ang daming taong galit. Yung antaling maglabas ng galit sa social media. Tama? Yung sama ng loob, nakapost agad. Dati, ang sikat na sikat, itong salitang ito, basta't may katwiran, paglaban mo. Sino yun? Atorni, season. <laughs> diba? Kapag may katwiran, ipaglaban mo. Ngayon, iba na. Alam niyo kung ano na ngayon? Basta't pwedeng mag-viral, ipatulpo mo. <laughs> diba? Kanya na ngayon. That's why tonight we would like to share with you four steps on how to give correction. Ilan? Four steps. Singa, tama mo yung nasakan mo. Sabi mo nasakan niya, ready ka na ba? 
Tingnan mo, ready ka na ba? Pwede mo sagutin mo siya. Sabihin mo sa kanya, paano ako magiging ready? Sige, sabihin mo, paano ako magiging ready? Kalabit ka ng kalabit. So, four steps to restore a friend. Ready? If you're ready, let's welcome my brother builders. And to start, let's call on and let's give a warm big welcome to Brother Oi. Happy anniversary, everyone. You know, looking at the lineup of peace builders that we have, sabi ko sa rili ko, wala na atang igagwapo tong mga to. No? Nag-umpisa kay Brother Agonjo ko Diaz, di ba? Brother James, boses pa lang Tom Jones. Mike Vinyas, Marvin Agustin. Belden Lim, bayani at bayani. Ma, kami, wala, wala ka talaga, hindi mo matatapatan eh. Ang titindi. So sabi ko, well, tinawag niyo ako, sinaman niyo ako, alam niyo na. <laughs> Di ba? But kidding aside, and to all those who are watching online, it's an honor and a privilege to be here to speak as a feast builder for the first time ng live. Ng live. I've been giving talks online. Pero ngayon, ito na yon. And for those who do not know me, I am Brother Oying Isidoro. I am the Feast Builder of WFFA. You know, the verse that we are going to talk for today, or the verses that we will be talking, paborito ko to. Kasi ito talaga ang aking kasangga kapag nag-handle ako sa youth ministry. Dahil sa youth ministry, laging may conflict. Simpleng bagay, conflict na yan. Kuya, Sinabi niya kasi dun sa crush ko eh, na alam mo na yun, yung hindi ko pa napapagawa yung dapat kong pagawa ngayon sa summer kasi nag-pandemic. Di ba? Alam mo na, nakakahiya, kalalaking tao ko, di ba? Sabi ko, hindi eh, mag-usap kayo, bakit niya sinabi? Bakit? Kasi yun yung first. Di ba? Later on, I will explain why it's the first. Alam niyo, minsan may kaibigan ako, kausap ko siya, Tapos sabi niya, alam mo bro, minsan pag nagmumotor ako, hindi ko sinusuot yung helmet ko kapag alam kong walang nanghuhuli. Sabi ko, bakit? Sabi ko, bakit mo hindi sinusuot? Eh, wala namang mag implement eh. Okay lang yun. Ang hirap kaya ang huminga pag naka-helmet ka, lalo na pag full face yung helmet mo hanggang dito. Ang hirap. Sabi ko sa kanya, alam mo, kaibigan, walang huhuli sa'yo. Pero, Yung law of gravity, fully implemented yan kahit saan ka magpunta. Kapag natumba ka, sigurado, sasadsad ka sa sahig. At sa ayaw at sa gusto mo, mauuntog ka. At kung mabilis ang takbo mo, pwede kang madisgrasya. Kaya ang mahalaga na isuot mo yung helmet mo. Why am I saying this? Because there are certain laws in life that God created. That these laws, whether we believe or not, wherever we go, these laws are implemented. Like the laws of humility, the laws of love, of honesty. Kahit hindi ka naniniwala sa honesty, kapag meron kang binitray yung tao na pinagsinungalingan mo, the next time na magsabi ka ng totoo, pagdududahan ka na. Tama? Kahit na simple lang yung sinabi mo. Bakit? Because these are universal laws. Whether you believe it or not, it will happen. And I'm going to tell you, God created spiritual laws that will govern us, that governs the universe. And they govern you whether you believe them or not. They will govern you. That's why you need to believe. So going, going forward, no, you violate the spiritual laws, you destroy yourself and others. Katulad ng example kanina, no, pag nagmumotor ka ng walang helmet at nadisgrasya ka, nasaktan ka na at kung merong nakabangga sa'yo or may nabangga ka, dalawa pa kayo. Kasi hindi ka nag-helmet, naka-aksidente ka pa ng iba. So, not following this universal laws doesn't only harm you but it also harm others. Amen? Let's continue. 
these verses that we will be reading for today, these are the guidelines that we will use if ever you see someone violate these laws. Jesus told us what to do para alam natin paano ba natin lalapitan yung kapwa natin kung meron silang nagawang mali. So are you ready for the four, four steps? If you are ready, can you say Amen? Sige, kindatan mo yung katabi mo kasi hindi naman nakikita yung buka ng inyong bibig kaya kumindat na lang kayo para alam nilang ready na kayo. Four steps to restore a friend. Step number one, you need to go alone. Go alone. Ito na yung sinasabi ko kanina. Matthew 18 verse 15. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won the person back. Operating word, private. Go in private. Kausapin mo siya ng kayong dalawa lang. That's why the first step means you need to go alone. The truth is, friends are those who stab you in front. Diba? Yung mga kaibigan mo, yan yung kayang sabihin sa'yo ng harapan, ano yung mali. Naalala ko nga, may isang activity dati sa parokya namin, na magsusulat kami ng affirmation. Tapos ginagawa namin sa likod. Kasi mahirap magsulat sa harap, diba? Nagsulat ka sa likod. Tapos binibiro ko yung parish priest. Sabi ko, Father, paano kung ayaw mong affirmation, paano kung correction yung gusto mong isulat? Sabi niya, ay may activity tayo dyan. Pero it's the other way around. If you want to write corrections, the paper needs to be in front. Kaya mo bang isulat yung isusulat mo pag nakaharap yung tao? Kasi kung kaya mo lang isulat yan pag nakatalikod siya, wag mo nang gawin. Napaisip ako, oo nga, ano? tama po kayo doon. But you see, my dear brothers and sisters, it's so sad that today, instead of telling the person privately, we rant online. Yan talaga eh, katulad ng sinabi ni Brother James. Di ba? Sinabi ni Brother James kung ano yung magbabiral. So minsan, sa halip na kausapin natin yung tao na naka-offend sa atin, ang gagawin natin ay magbabiral to. Nakakainis kasi yung ginawa niya eh. So halip na kausapin mo, ipopost mo pa. Kasi it will garner likes. Di ba? May mga nakikita akong post, ganito yung nakalagay. Tanggal ang hashtag bless niyan kapag siningil ko. Kung may utang sa'yo yung tao, eh di ka usapin mo in private. Bakit ka maniningil doon sa comment section? Diba? Sabihin mo sa kanya. Uy, nakita ko nag-post ka bago cellphone mo. Pwede na ba akong maniningil? But do it in private, not in the comment section. Sa social media kasi nagkamali na eh. Doon, doon mo pa gustong i-correct. Derechahan dun sa comment section Call their attention I remember one time Dun sa aking Facebook page Sa Preacher in Chucks May pinost ako na mali ang spelling And one of my colleagues at work Called my attention in private Sabi niya, sir Nakita ko yung pinost mo Mali yung spelling Baka gusto mong i-correct When you want to correct someone You need to do that in private you need to do it in pri private. And when you go alone to talk to that person, there are three things that you need to remember. Three tips that I will give so that you can do a loving correction when you talk to the person. Tip number one, express your love. Express your love. You need to show the person that you are talking to that you are doing this out of love. And you are not doing this because you just want to point out his mistake. Kailangan iparamdam mo sa kanya na mahal kita. I am doing this because I love you. I am doing this because I don't want you to go stray. I want, I'm doing this because I want you to correct it because it will hurt you and others. So, kailangan iparamdam mo sa kanya na mahal mo siya 
kaya mo ginagawa yun. That's the first tip. Tip number two, express your humility. If you already told him that you love him, you need to also tell him that this is what I saw. This is what I felt. And then you can add, I may be wrong. I may be wrong. Baka mali kasi yung nakita ko eh. Pero ito yung nakita ko. Kaya gusto kong i-call yung attention mo. But I may be wrong. So in all humility, you have to say that. You cannot go there and be all boastful and all-knowing and self-righteous and say, ikaw kasi ganito ginawa mo eh. No, you have to be humble enough to say, I may be wrong because I might have seen it from my perspective. But I still need to tell you. Amen? Tip number three, express your commitment. Diba? You want to move forward eh. Ayaw mo lang naman siyang i-correct. Tapos, parang wala ang pa- eh, pinamukha mo lang sa kanyang mali siya. O, ano nang gagawin ko? Ewan ko sa'yo, bahala ka sa buhay mo. Hindi ganun eh. Diba? Pag sinabi mo sa kanyang may mali ka, pagtulungan natin kung paano natin aayusin yan. And I am, I will be here for you so that we can straighten that out. Hindi kita iiwan, hindi kita lalaglag. The best line you can say here is, how can I help? How can I help? You know, in the youth ministry, meron akong na-encounter na ganitong problema before. May nagsumbong sa akin. Sabi niya, Kuya Oying, may isusumbong lang ako na isang leader natin. Sabi ko, oh, sige, anong problema dun sa isa pang co-leader mo, co-servant mo? Sabi niya, ganito po kasi yung nangyayari. Eh. Mag-boyfriend pa lang sila, pero dun siya natutulog sa bahay ng girlfriend niya. Eh, di ba, alam mo naman, Kuya Oying, mahirap yun. Sabi ko, yes, I, I see your point. Thank you for calling my attention. I will talk to them. Pero after niya akong kausapin, pinangunahan pa rin niya ako. Siya yung kumausap dun sa dapat nakakausapin ko. Ang masakla, pinagalitan niya. Eh technically, they are co equal kasi pareho lang naman sila ng posisyon. Tapos pinagalitan niya. So ngayon, dalawa na silang problema. Yung isa yung nagsusumbong, tsaka yung dapat kong kakausapin. Masama na ang loob. So sabi ko, lumaki yung sunog. So inausap ko yung unang nagsumbong sa akin. Sabi ko, brother, di ba nagsumbong ka na sa akin? Nakaschedule na yan this week eh. Ba't mo ko inunahan? Ba't mo ko inunahan? Sabi ko, sige, mag-usap tayo. So nag-set ako ng appointment. Sinabihan ko lang siya sa text na bakit mo ko inunahan, pero kailangan tayo mag-usap. So nag-usap kami. And I told him, sabi ko, bro, I'm not doing this because I, I just want to point out your mistake or because my, my authority was bypassed because, but because I love you. As a leader, you need to know to follow protocols. Mahal kita ayokong makulit ito dahil baka may iba pang taong magalit sa'yo. Sabi ko, pero baka naman mali yung pagkakaintindi ko sa nangyari, pwede bang ikwento mo yung side mo? Kasi baka mali yung pagkakasumbong sa akin eh. Ano bang nangyari? So, second step, I, I said that I might be wrong. In all humility, I might be wrong. So, sige, kwento mo yung side mo. Kinwento niya. After niya ikwento, sabi ko, pininpoint namin yung mga mali. Tapos sabi ko, ano bang magagawa ko para matulungan ka lagi? Para wag tong maulit. Kasi leader ka rin eh. Hahawa ka rin ng tao katulad ko. Kailangan matuto ka kung paano makipag-usap. Ano bang gagawin natin? At nag-open up siya. Kasi kuya, minsan feeling ko sobrang eager ko eh. Sabi ko, kailangan... Alamin mo yung tamang timing kung kailan ka kakausap ng tao. Kasi pag mali yung timing mo, kahit maganda yung intention mo, sasablay yan. Sabi nga ni John Maxwell, the right thing at the wrong time is still wrong. So kahit ang objective mo, mahal mo siya at gusto mo siyang i-correct, mali yung timing mo, palpak yan. Sasablay ka. And he learned. And he's growing up to be a good leader. 
The next step, step number two, is taken from the verse, verse 16. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two to go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or more witnesses. Go with a friend. Yun yung step two. Go with a friend. Hindi dahil naghahanap ka ng kakampi. Why do you need to go and bring a friend? Because sometimes your perspective and his perspective might be wrong. Diba pag ikaw nagkwento, tama ka. Pag siya ang nagkwento, tama siya. Hindi pwedeng pareho kayong tama. Pero pag nagsama ka ng isa pa, makikita niya kung sino talaga sa inyo yung pwedeng tama. At wala siyang bias, kaya pwede niyang sabihin, Brother, baka naman defensive ka lang. Bro, baka hindi mo lang nakikita yung position niya. There is somebody who will play as an arbiter. And the good thing is, if there are two people arguing, having two perspectives, the third person can reconcile the facts without being biased. Diba? So that's why it's important that you follow these steps. Meron pa pong mga susunod na steps and it will be given by my other brother builders. So I'd like to call on the bestest feast builder that I have served with for the longest time. My feast builder in Feast Bikutan, Brother Belden Lim. Natapos mo akong laitin, pupurihin mo ako. <laughs> good evening po sa inyong lahat. And good morning, good afternoon. Hello to all those who are watching online our feast today. It's good to be back here. It's good to be with you. It's good to see people face to face. Alam nyo, um, a lot of us parang lutang nitong pandemic. Pero alam nyo, kanina nung nag-worship tayo, na-realize ko kung Kahit ako rin, eh, nakafeel ako nung slight depression, parang lutang, hindi mo alam kung anong gagawin mo. At the end of the day, we are longing for presence of people. We are longing for friends, brothers and sisters. Kaya kanina nung sabay-sabay tayo nag-worship, talagang umiiyak lang ako dun sa, sa, sa likod. Sabi ko, Lord, ito yung matagal na parang feeling kong kulang. Yung ikaw with the company, with corporate people, corporate worship, together worshiping the Lord and it's good to be here it's good to be together and praise God palakpakan natin ang Panginoon which happens to be the next step in correcting people in restoring a friend una ang sabi you need to go in private go alone second step is you need to go with the friend kuha ka ng isang kaibigan para tulungan ka mag-correct tama lahat sinabi ni Oying pero ito pagka hindi pa rin nagbago at hindi pa rin na-correct here's step 3 you need to go with the community Matthew 18, 17 let's continue it says here if the person still refuses to listen ah take your case to the church now, teka lang, bago natin isipin, ano ba tong take your case to the church? You need to understand the context during Jesus' time. Kasi pag naisip ninyo, take this case to the church, ang nasa isip natin, ay, take this case to the church, ah, baka kailangan after the mass. Ang, 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 ang mental picture kasi natin ng church is this, parish church. Ah, siguro after the mass, dun dapat i-correct ni Father. Yung tipong pagkadutating sa pagka, at ang parish announcement. Mga kapatid, meron po tayong announcement ngayon. Uh, alam nyo, meron tayong isang kapatid dito, si si Cordapia, ay nangalun niya. Ganyan, diba? Ay ng ibang bahay. Ganun. Ganun. Kinokorek in the context of this, parish church, No. Hindi po ganun. Ayan. O kaya tipong ia-announce si Brother Arun sa feast. Okay, ito po. Mga kapatid, meron tayo dito isa. Nag-away na mag-asawa. Hindi ganun. Bakit? You need to understand this. That in Matthew's Gospel, it was written in a time when the church were only small house churches. In fact, the Greek word used is ekklesia. And at that time, ecclesia means a small group of believers. Maliit lang. Gano kaliit? Alam nyo kung ano? Tanong nyo sa akin, ano? Parang yung light groups natin. 
people of 6 to 10 people, malaki na yung 30 sa isang church. Yung, yung binabasa natin sa, sa Bible, uh, a reading from the letter of Paul, uh, St. Saint, Saint Paul to the Corinthians, to the Ephesians. Usually yung church na yun, yung community na yun, kakaunti lang yung 30 people. Malaking, 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 malaki na yung 100 people. So, nung sinulat ito ni Matthew, kailan nyo intindihin, na pag sinabing you need to correct your brother and you need to take your case to the church, ibig sabihin nun, yung kanilang small church na parag bagang light group. So you need to imagine this, that if you're correcting people, at ayaw pa rin talaga, ang tigas ng ulo. Imagine 10 people at the dining table, nandun sila, he, they are confronting a fellow member and telling him, Oy, alam mo, mahal ka namin ha, kaya sasabihin namin ito sa iyo. Kasi sinisira ka ng ginagawa mong mali. And then you proceed with the correction. Am I making sense here? This ecclesia, small church, actually cares about each other. They love each other. That's why they are accountable to each other. Operative word, accountable. Bakit? Jesus is calling us and telling us that we are our brother's keeper. Bakit? Kasi kung may mali ang kapatid mo, may kasalanan siya, Klaro kay Jesus that sin can never be isolated. Hindi pwede ikaw lang. Kaya nga lumalaki ang kasalanan eh. Kapag ka sinusolo mo lang, wala kang pinagsasabihan. And this is the value of accountability. And hindi ka i-correct in that small group in that, in that church, hindi para pagkaisahan ka, kundi para tulungan ka. Because tandaan nyo ito ha, Yung iba kasi sinasabi, huwag nyo na lang akong pakialaman. Bakit? Tama kanina sinabi ni Brother James, I'll do it my way, you do your way. Kanya-kanya tayo, to each his own. Pero itong tandaan ninyo, the opposite of love is not hate. Ano ang opposite ng love? It is indifference. Alam nyo yung indifference? Yung wala nang pakialam. And here's the thing, here's what I believe in. Kapag ang LG mo, light group mo, ang feast, Hindi ka na kinokorek, ibig sabihin nun, hindi ka na mahal niyan. Am I making sense here? Because I deeply believe that a church that does not dare to correct you, does not really care about you. Now, here's the beautiful part. What if the person is already corrected by this small church, and then he refuses to listen to his little community? Ah, ito na. Maganda na. Anong mungkahi ni Jesus? Jesus suggests the fourth step. Ano yung sinabi ni Jesus? Basahin natin, Matthew 18, 17. It says here, Then if he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. Grabe? Grabe naman si Jesus. Parang ang harsh. Talaga ba? Treat the person as a pagan or a tax collector. Parang ang harsh naman, Brother Belden. Yan, magiging magmumukhang harsh yan if you will read the text by itself. Mukhang harsh yan. But itong gusto kong maintindihan po nating lahat, look at me, look at me. You need to remember that a few stories before this, Jesus befriended a tax collector named Matthew. Diba? And he also befriended Gentiles, pagans. And in fact, just a few verses before this, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 12, anong sanabi ni Jesus dito? Sabi ni Jesus, If a man has a hundred sheep, and one of them wanders away, what will he do? Won't he leave the ninety-nine others on the hills and go out to search for the one that is lost? Nakita niyo yun? Yung pinag-usapan natin a few weeks ago. So, ibig sabihin si Jesus, kung merong napariwara, hindi niya yung, bahala ka na sa buhay mo, hindi ganun. So what does Jesus mean when he said treat him as a pagan or tax collector? Alam niyo kung ano tanong niyo sa akin, ano? He simply means na kapag nagawa mo na ang lahat, kinorek mo na in private, nagsama ka ng kaibigan, sinama mo na in church mo. Ay, ay ito ang gawin mo. Anong sinasabi ni Jesus? You need to go to God and surrender. Ano ibig sabihin? In other words, you need to surrender this person to God's mercy. Sa Tagalog, ipagpasa Diyos mo na lang. You, because treating the person as an outsider means you respect your limitations. Alam nyo, paano ko natutunan? Alam nyo, if there's one thing that you need to realize this, 
no matter how good you are, no matter how kind you are, kahit na ang ganda, ang linis ng intention mo para tumulong sa ibang tao, at the end of the day, hindi mo kayang baguhin yung taong yan. Tama o tama? Paano ko ito natutunan? Tanyo sa akin, paano? Lahat ito ay natutunan ko nung nag-asawa na ako. <laughs> di ba? Sabi ni, sabi, kanina, sabi ni Tito James kanina, sabi niya, di ba, sino sa inyo dito, di ba, di ba wala naman sa inyo dito ang gustong-gustong nagko-correct ng ibang tao? Si Tito Mandy nasa likod ko, hindi totoo yan. Yung asawa ko, ang hilig akong i-correct. Di ba? Sa mga may asawa dito, <laughs> naiintindihan niyo yung sinasabi ko, di ba? Alam niyo, ang mga asawa natin, ang number one kritiko natin, number one corrector, Pero wag ka, kahit na anong correction ng asawa natin, hindi naman tayo nagbabago. Tama o tama? Ang tagal, itong taon na po kami mag-asawa ng misis ko, ang tagal niya na sa akin sinasabi na walagi kong papatayin yung ilaw kapag ka ginamit ko. Awa ng Diyos, kagabi lang, napagalitan ako ng asawa ko. Nakalimutan kong patayin yung switch ng ilaw. Oh, ikaw talaga, sinasabi ko sa'yo, papatayin mo tong ilaw. Ano ka ba? Mayaman ka ba? Ikaw, para, parang yung bahay natin, parang malakan niyang bukas ang lahat ng ilaw. Ganyan. At awa ng Diyos, sa tagal, tagal ng correction niya, hindi pa rin po ako nagbabago. Di ba? Nung bago kami mag-asawa, yung misis ko, ay nako, grabe, meron siyang, eh, kung naglalax kayo, alam niyo itong story yung to eh. Yung pagka, nung pagka, nung bago kami kasal, naligo siya. Sabi niya, love, paabot ng tuwalya. Sabi ko, ay, grabe, sige, kukunin ko yung tuwalya, kinuka yung tuwalya, binigay ko sa kanya. And then, the next day, sabi niya, love, paabot ng tuwalya. Sabi ko, hmm. Ikaw ba, umi-style ka. Gusto mo siguro pumasok ko ng banyo. Kinuha ko yung tuwalya. Binigay ko na lang sa kanya. Ang cute. One day, two days, three days. Pagdating na nun, 30th day. Love. Oh, ano na naman? Yung tuwalya, nakalimutan mo. Bakit pa hindi mo kasi dinadala yung tuwalya? Hindi ka ba tinuro na nanay at tatay mo na dapat pagpapasok ka ng banyo, dadali mo yung tuwalya? Pambihira ka naman. Ang sarap-sarap na nahiga ko dito. Hindi na cute. Alam nyo, ang laking away noon nung first month of marriage namin. But here's what I've realized. No matter how much I love her, no matter how much I remind her, no matter how much I want to decorect her, at the end of the day, I can only love her and I cannot change her. Only God can do that for me. And of course, the decision to change must be the other person the other person's initiative to be corrected and to change. Am I making sense here? Yun lang magagawa natin magmahal. Kaya pero alam nyo, by God's grace ngayon, hindi ko na, gina, hindi ko na kinukuha yung tuwalya tuwing naliligo siya. Praise be to God. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Bakit? Inuutos ko na kay Zion. Zion, anak, kunin mo nga yung tuwalya ng mami mo. At siya lang nagdadala. What's my point, my dear friends? At the end of the day, when you have corrected, when you have brought another person, sinali mo na yung buong light group ninyo, yung mga taong nagmamahal sa kanya, at hindi pa rin nagbago, you need to accept your boundaries. Because the truth is this, you cannot save everyone. You cannot save every relationship. Why? Because you're not the savior of the world. Remember, you're not the Messiah. You're just the messenger. Hindi akong sasalba sa kanya. Let me end with the story. Can I invite you to stand up, brothers and sisters? Alam niyo po, dito sa feast, being a community, isa sa pinakamahirap na trabaho nating lahat, hindi naman talaga trabaho, responsibility as brothers and sisters, is to bring them closer to God, uh, suggest that they turn away from their sin, magbagong buhay, be selfless, etc. Pero alam nyo, meron, meron isang member ng feast na mahal na mahal ko, mag-asawa sila actually. And by God's grace, because of the feast, they have been actually living together pero hindi sila kasal but by the grace of God by the grace of our marriage retreat 
sila ay nagpakasal a few years ago. So, tuwan po kayong mga tao, pakasal sila. Unfortunately, hindi naman porket nagpakasal ka, hindi naman porket member ka na ng feast, nag ka, nagsuserve ka kay Lord, eh, problem-proof na yung marriage ninyo. And so, may mga times na nag-aaway sila mag-asawa, may mga times na itong mag-asawa na ito pupunta sa akin, yung lalaki, makikipag one-to-one, kakausapin ko, pag nagdarasal ko, yung misis niya, pupunta naman sa light group head niya, o kaya doon sa mga ka-LG nila, and then, they try to fix things out. Unfortunately, meron silang isang naging sobrang laking away na talagang hirap na hirap silang i-repair. And so, buti naman humingi sila ng tulong sa mga kapatid natin dito sa community, sa mga ka-LG nila, sa akin personally. So, the LG was doing their best to fix their marriage, to give counseling, give advice, kikinig, mamahalin sila. And I can even remember in one of our retreats, nakausap ko yung babae, umiiyak siya, sabi niya sa akin, brother, alam kong may kasalanan ako, alam kong kasalanan ko, sorry, 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 pero thank you for always welcoming me here at the feast, letting me serve, loving me, but I'm really sorry because I don't think I can make this marriage work. And masakit yun para sa mga kung ikaw ay feast builder, masakit yun. Kung ikaw ay light group head, masakit yun. Grabe yung investment mo ng emotions, you journeyed with people, with their problems, ilang oras kayo nag-uusap, e minsan parang paulit-ulit na yung pinagkukwentuhan ninyo, tapos ang ending pala, lalayo pa rin, magkakahiwalay pa rin sila sa dulo. So here's what happened. The wife, nagpakalayo-layo, iniwan niya yung mister niya, our brother, along with the kids, And it's so painful. It was heartbreaking. But however, ito rin sinasabi ko na we're not the savior of the world. We can only love, we can only listen, we can only try to correct. But at the end of the day, what gives me peace, even though it's heartbreaking, is that I know that we did our best. And you see, my dear friends, in our own relationships, in our own lives, here's the truth. Some people are meant to be in your life for only a season and not forever. In fact, until now, I am praying for that couple, especially for the wife. Ang pinagdaras ko na one day, sana matauhan siya, bumalik siya sa pamilya niya, if it's God's will. Because you see, my dear brothers and sisters, surrendering someone to God's mercy doesn't mean na ikaw na bahala sa buhay mo, hindi. It doesn't mean that you stop praying for him or her or stop loving him or her. Why? Because we never stop loving because God never stops loving. We just need to learn that there, that there are many ways to love. Na minsan, kung sobrang mahal mo yung isang tao, kung ayaw niya talaga, you need to let her go, you need to let her be ipagpasa Diyos mo na lang. And our one big message today is love is tough. Mahirap talaga magmahal, I guess. That's the irony of love, my dear brothers and sisters. Love is powerful, but it is not forceful. Na kahit na anong concern mo, kahit na gusto mong i-correct, kahit na gusto mong tulungan, at the end of the day, you cannot change the person. Lalo na kung ayaw makinig. Kaya nga ang hirap magmahal kasi grabe yung investment mo pero walang kasiguraduhan kung susuklian ka. Walang kasiguraduhan kung magbabago ba. Walang kasiguraduhan kung magsistay ba. Pero ganun talaga eh. True love is tough. Tough enough to let go and let God. Amen?
And today, brothers and sisters, we are celebrating 12 years of God's faithfulness in our district. And you know what brought us together? It's this family, relationship, that no matter what happens, even if your brother or sister failed you, even if may nakasama ka ng loob dito sa feast, still, you chose to let go and to let God. And that's why we are here. We continue to let go and let God. And I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, maybe some of you here right now, this message is not about relationships. Maybe this message is calling you to go back to the source of our joy, to Jesus. And whatever it is that is troubling your mind, your heart, making you anxious, maybe God is calling you to just let go and let God be God. And so brothers and sisters, I invite you into prayer as we come into worship. I want you to surrender everything to the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father in heaven, I lift up to you, my dear brothers and sisters here. We come to you, Lord, with everything that we have. There are so many things, Lord, in our life that needs to be corrected. But Lord, after we have done all that we could, we surrender them all into your hands. We may not know what our future holds, but we know, Lord, who holds our future. And that is you. Teach us to trust in you with all that we are, with all that we am. And we pray, Lord, that as we move forward daily, we continue to trust you in whatever way, in whatever time possible. All these, Father, we ask and pray and claim in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to shout it out. I trust in Jesus. Shout it out. I trust in Jesus. I trust in Jesus. We surrender everything to you, O God. And let us be our declaration. We sing to you. Wherever I will be, whenever it will be, I trust in every way. Lift my hands and come one day. Wherever I will be, whenever it will be, I trust in every way. Lift my hands and come one more. Come on, sing it out. Wherever I will be, whatever it will be, I trust in every way. Lift my hands and come on. We trust you, God. Wherever I will be, whatever it will be, I trust in every way. Lift my hands and come on. I trust.
bless your name. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us for 12 years. And we will continue to serve you, say yes to you for more years until our last breath. This we claim in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Tell everybody, happy anniversary. Let's give the Lord a big hand again. Hallelujah. Before I let you go, I would like to exhort you on our giving. Naalala ko nitong lockdown, may nagtitinda ng taho sa amin. Naglalako ng taho. Tapos alam niyo si Johan, yung anak ko, bumibili siya ng taho doon sa nagtataho. At alam mo sabi nung nagtitinda ng taho, Johan, Salamat kasi may trabaho pa ako dahil sa ginagawa mo pag pagbili ng taho ganun tapos si Johan parang he took it upon himself to really help so every time marinig niya yung taho bibili siya talaga ng taho so nung mga panahon na yan na pinayagan ng village namin yung taho pumapasok diabetic kaming lahat sa bahay oh, ang dami arnibal eh, no? but Johan was helping this guy Tapos yung tao, very appreciative na tumutulong. In our giving, it's the same thing. Once you give, it is because the Lord is blessing you here. So I continue to encourage you, huwag kayo mapapagod sa pagbibigay. You are giving not to us, you are giving to the Lord through us. Kasi dito niyo binibigay sa feast eh, no? But you give to the Lord and the one who will reward you is, is God Himself. And let me use the words of the taho vendor. Dahil sa ginagawa niyo, na itutuloy namin ito. Na itutuloy namin. There are a lot of communities who are not meeting anymore because they cannot. They, the people were gone. Nawala yung mga tao sa community. Second, they cannot sustain it. So they closed their community. Tayo, we are continuing. Why? Because you're here. You watch. You continue to support. And you continue to be part of our family. So thank you so much. 12 years and more, we will rejoice because we have resilient faith, all of us. Let us continue that. Rejoice always in the Lord. Amen. Let me pray for your giving. Father in heaven, thank you for allowing us to give something. And thank you for teaching us to really trust in you. Through our giving, I pray that you return this to my brothers and sisters a thousandfold, O oh God. Reward them in your own special way. And just put an extra bonus of surprise and grace to these brothers and sisters who are so generous in helping you build your kingdom here on earth. And this we pray and claim in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy anniversary. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Happy anniversary! Happy 12th anniversary, Feast Happy 12th anniversary, Feast Happy 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 anniversary, Feast I'm
Thank you. 